Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the previous programming class, uh, we talked about the pitch detection, the fundamental frequency detection algorithm, so how to identify the fundamental frequency of a harmonic sound. Now we are ready to put together the whole harmonic model, the analysis and synthesis. So this is the block diagram of the system that uh, we have and we're going to explain in which uh, we start from the, the standard uh, blocks that we already have seen in the sinusoidal model so that it uh, takes the input sound, it windows, uh, then it uh, performs uh, the DFT and then it finds the, the peaks and these two blocks are the ones that uh, are specific for the harmonic model so the first one is the F0 detection so from the peaks it identifies the best fundamental frequency and then uh, it uh, tries to find the harmonics based on that fundamental frequency and this is what we'll be talking about uh, today and then this goes to the synthesis and the synthesis is exactly the same than in the sinusoidal model so we generate uh, the sinusoids in the spectral domain we do the inverse FFT and then we do the overlap add to uh, reproduce uh, the whole sound. So let's go to the, the file uh, harmonicmodel.py. This is the file that includes uh, most of the functions of the harmonic model, uh, the, the actual uh, implementation of the, of the F0 detection is in the util functions uh, file, but here we have the wrapper to the fundamental frequency F0 detection that we already mentioned in the last, uh, last lecture. Then we have the harmonic detection that we'll be talking about uh, shortly. And uh, then we have the, the complete harmonic model, harmonic model that does both the analysis and synthesis, but this is uh, meant to be uh, run in real time. So it doesn't allow for cleaning of the tracks. So we will be talking about uh, today uh, uh, on the analysis and synthesis separate because this allows us to uh, do cleaning of tracks and so handle a little bit of, of memory of uh, past few frames and this will result into better analysis uh, and resynthesis. So let's uh, talk about this function, harmonic model anal. So it uh, inputs all the parameters of the analysis, the input array uh, of uh, samples, the sampling rate, the window, the FFT size, hop size, the threshold T for the peaks, the number of harmonics that are allowed, so this is the maximum number, then the range of uh, frequencies uh, for the fundamental frequency detection, so this uh, mean F0 and max F0, then there is this uh, error threshold that is also part of the F0 detection algorithm. So this is uh, the minimum uh, error that we'll be accepting. And then for the uh, sort of track continuation, harmonic continuation, we have these two parameters. One is the harmonic deviation slope. This is a, a sort of a deviation slope from the previous uh, um, series of harmonics and from the ideal harmonic series and uh, this is a, a way to account for uh, that higher harmonics uh, should allow for a bigger deviation than uh, um, lower harmonics and then finally a parameter to control the length of uh, harmonic tracks so that uh, we don't accept uh, shorter tracks than the ones uh, specified with this parameter and uh, the actual code is again very similar to the sinusoidal model. We have a main loop that iterates over the, the whole sound and it keeps uh, analyzing the spectrum, finding the peaks, uh, interpolating those peaks and then here is where uh, the specific code of the harmonic model starts. So we, we call the fundamental frequency uh, algorithm Okay, so this is the one from the utility functions that we uh, we uh, talked about in the last lecture. Then we have these uh, few lines that make sure that this uh, new fundamental frequency uh, is not that different from the previous one so that it maintains certain continuity. And then there is this uh, function called harmonic detection. 
this is the one that identifies the harmonics of fundamental frequency and it's uh, above uh, this uh, code so let's go to here this is the harmonic detection uh, function okay so this is the one that given uh, the fundamental frequency f0 and the peaks of the spectrum it identifies which of these peaks are close to multiples of this fundamental frequency we also as inputs uh, we accept some uh, information from the previous frame so that uh, we can identify if there is some time continuity and then this uh, deviation that is uh, the deviation we allowed from perfect harmonicity and from perfect continuity from the previous uh, frame okay so the code is not that complicated the core is uh, basically these three lines in which uh, we defined uh, the deviation from perfect harmonicity so we find the peaks compared uh, or a particular peak compared with uh, a particular perfect harmonic we also compared a peak with respect to the previous uh, harmonic coming from the previous frame and then we define a threshold based on this uh, harmonic deviation slope that's the one that will be accepted so if the current peak uh, is within that threshold uh, therefore within the kind of vertical deviation and horizontal deviation so it had this frequency and time uh, evolution uh, tracking so we accept uh, that peak as a harmonic and we keep adding to the harmonic uh, that uh, that we create and that's all that's basically what the harmonic detection does so if we go back to the harmonic model now <coughs> after this harmonic detection that's it this is a uh, sort of some code to create the the array of values that keeps adding up to the whole uh, the whole matrix of uh, the output and finally if uh, once the the whole process is done so once uh, we have uh, gone through the whole sound we clean the tracks so we delete the tracks that are smaller than a given uh, duration and again this is the same than we did in the sinusoidal analysis okay so uh, uh, I wrote a script that basically analyzes a sound with this uh, harmonic uh, model anal function so we took uh, this uh, Vignesh uh, sound and uh, uh, so specified uh, all the parameters so the number of parameters are starting to get uh, quite a few so we have the window, we have the, the window size, uh, the FFT size, the threshold there's no need for this uh, comma here so uh, minus 90 as the threshold the minimum uh, duration in time the number of uh, maximum number of harmonics the minimum fundamental frequency and maximum fundamental fre frequency the error threshold that uh, we, uh, we accept and then this uh, deviation slope that we just talked about then there is these uh, two parameters that are normally fixed because they are more related to synthesis which is the FFT of the synthesis buffer and the hop size which uh, given that the FFT buffer requires uh, for, uh, for, the, for the synthesis uh, it requires a hop size to be one fourth of that so we normally put the H as being 128 so we normally don't allow any any changes from that so from the from the graphical interface uh, there is no control over these two parameters okay and then uh, we read the sound we get the window and we call this uh, harmonic model anal function and here I just uh, plot this uh, the frequencies of uh, these trajectories so let's uh, run this uh, so let's run uh, test 3 well, let's first save it okay and now let's run it okay and this is uh, the trajectories we obtain okay they are uh, okay they are pretty good if we zoom in into a particular region we might be able to see a little bit more okay okay so of course if we zoom in we're starting to see the problems at the the transitions between nodes 
and especially we see a problem as the the harmonics go higher and higher up and this is uh, because uh, this uh, this is of course a linear scale and these deviations are, are kind of logarithmic so as the, the the frequency goes up in fact the changes get much larger because they are uh, logarithmic uh, changes so in fact this is the reason why we need this deviation slope that we specified here so for example if we reduce this deviation slope let's make instead of 0 0.01 let's po make point zero zero uh, one and let's run it again okay we will see that now there are much fewer tracks especially in the higher frequencies you know, the, it does restricted the deviation allowed in the higher frequencies so it has uh, the, the, the increase of deviation is much smaller so it has not allowed this larger deviation so with that we have quite a bit of control of uh, how this tracking process uh, is uh, implemented okay so in the in the sms uh, tools uh, uh, package there is this harmonic model function that performs both the analysis and synthesis and is in fact the file that is called from the from the interface so in this, in this uh, file, we have uh, one main function, and it has all these parameters that uh, we uh, already talked about. But apart from uh, the analysis that we uh, already perform, it does the synthesis. Okay? And then it saves the file into a, a synthesis file, and it plots uh, analysis and synthesis of this. So let's uh, run this. Uh, um, harmonic model function okay uh, so this will take a little bit longer because it has to do the analysis and then the synthesis and then it, it just plots the first uh, 5000 hertz I specified the to plot only phase 5000 hertz so here we see all these trajectories uh, that evolve in time and the synthesis uh, at least the waveform looks uh, quite similar so let's let's uh, listen to uh, the output sound so in now it created a file called uh, bignish uh, underscore harmonic uh, model dot wav so I can play it so I, I put uh, the exclamation mark play and just say type bignish okay so this is the synthesized version of uh, the original file and it's quite good I mean we will see uh, starting uh, next week that in fact there is some things that are left that are not included in this uh, resynthesis and this is basically the residual component that uh, uh, we're missing but anyway that's all for the harmonic model uh, and uh, we go back to the slides so we have uh, basically uh, seen the harmonic model from an implementation point of view by looking at the code and all this code is in Python uh, well in fact the, the fundamental frequency detection the one that we are using is a C version implementation but we also have the Python version and all this is included in the SMS tools uh, package so I would uh, definitely encourage you to go through that and run it and, uh, and abuse it if, uh, if you want so that was all for uh, these uh, programming uh, classes on the harmonic model Hopefully, uh, this has uh, given you a sort of a, a depth, uh, an in-depth uh, view of uh, what it entails to implement this type of, uh, of models. And, uh, well, uh, we will continue. So next week, uh, this will get a little bit more complicated because we will try to see what is missing out of this model. And uh, we will try to model this uh, missing part, which is going to be uh, the concept of the residual or the stochastic components. So I will see you uh, next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.